Hey guys, I am going to put together to today my rifle scabbard. I've had this leather cut out and ready to go for several years, okay? But my hands messed up, and so therefore I didn't get it done. Now, this little item right here is called a stitching horse, okay? Um, it can be had at Tandy Leather. Uh, it, it's a third hand. It holds it for you while you're doing other things. Uh, it tightens down. It's got a little thumb screw. And what I'm going to do is an X stitch all the way down and back. It, it's, a, it's, like a, it's, a, it's a double whip stitch, but it looks like an X when you're done. So the first thing you do is you tie off the first stitch. Now this is artificial sinew. Okay. So it's kind of sticky. It's waxy. And it would be fine for... Anything that has to be exposed to the weather much because it's protected. Now you tuck the first stitch down in there. You don't want it sticking out. Just tuck the first stitch down in there. And I got my needle on the other end. Now what I've got is I've got six times the length that I need. And the reason for that is because it takes about three times the length to go up, three times the length to go back because you're going around, around, around. You can't just do twice the length of this because otherwise you won't have enough thread. And I'm hoping to have enough thread to do it all in one go without having to splice anything together, which is a real pain in the butt. Um, so I made it six times the length. And what I do is just whip stitch it. Make sure it doesn't get knotted up. And you pull it tight. Now, it's really good about staying tight. Okay? So. Okay. I'm going to turn this so I can see what I'm doing. The holes were punched. Once I get the first sewing stretch done, the rest is super easy. Okay, I didn't punch all the way through. That's what it was. If it does loosen up, just pull it. The holes were made with this. This thing here is handy as a shirt pocket. It can be had a Tandy leather too. It's got several different holes. You can, uh, it's a one, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five different size holes. Okay. Uh, and this dial turns to choose the size of the hole. And then this tip punches down into the hole and cuts a hole in the leather. Without it being a regular hole punch, this thing cuts faster than a hole punch. It's easier than a hole punch. And with my hands the way they are, I needed something that was easy. And it's, of course, spring-loaded, so I don't have to constantly try to open it. It opens back up on its own. Really good little item if you're going to work with tools. Uh, work with leather, excuse me. Now, this particular item, I was going to get a 357 lever action. Okay? So... This particular scabbard is perfect for that. No scope, okay? Because in an SHTF situation, your scope might be an issue. What it might do is it might uh, it might catch on brush, break, uh, constantly need adjusting if you're traveling with it, and I don't. I'm not real good at adjusting scopes or anything like that, so therefore, I don't feel like I need to have a scope because if I'm not good at it, then why have it, right? Um, not to mention, you'll have to uh, side it in every once in a while, and that could give away your location. Now, what I've done is I made the, the, the line three times longer than the scabbard, so I can go up and back in one go. And that way, I don't have to try to uh, 
splice it. I don't want to try. I don't want it spliced. I want to try to get it all in one piece so that it will stay nice and nothing can come untied. And when you get it tight, you put it where you want it before you pull it tight. It's going to look like an X when I'm done. Right now it just looks like a straight stitch. And that's what it'll look like until I get around to making an X out of it. So, and then it'll look really good. As a matter of fact, I'll, one of these days I'll show you the saddlebags that I did that way. Just a double whip stitch is all it is. And I am so blind. See, I have to do this because I got to see. Okay, sometimes. Sometimes, if it doesn't want to do it, just open it back up so you can see it. There you go. I may not have punched it all the way through like it's supposed to have been done. There we go. Since this opposite side hole is giving me a little problem. I'm going to stop right here and put you on hold. And then I'm going to repunch some of these holes because they're just they're not showing up. Because it's been a while since these things were punched. And I'll be right back. Okay, back we are. <coughs> My hand is hurting already. Which is why I can't do this full time anymore. I used to have a tack store. I had Lady T Saddles and Tack in uh, Oklahoma. And I used to do all kinds of things. And uh, I made tack bridles, breast collars, latigos. Uh, I've never made a saddle because I'm not a saddle maker. So. See how easier it is when you, if you get the holes right. It's just a matter of lacing it. I'm not going to make you guys watch this whole thing. What I'll do is I'll get it a little bit so that you guys can see the how everything's turning out, and then I'll I'll get up on when I start back. I'll show you with the uh, with the uh, cross stitching. And also, there won't be quite as much string to pull through by then. Because right now, it's just a hassle because of all of the string. This particular hole punch makes the perfect hole for lacing like this. Okay. Just the perfect size. Not too loose, not too tight. Okay, I'm going to put you guys on hold. You can see how it's starting to come together. Okay. I'm going to put you on hold so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'll be right back. I don't know if I could told you guys this was my template that I used to use. Uh back in the day when I was making these things. I'd use this as my template and just trace around it. Um, <coughs> I didn't go buy leather special for this. And scratches are no big deal, really, because uh, 
well, it's going to be either on horseback or attached to a pack or something. Let me throw it around. This is to protect the gun. This doesn't need a lot of protection. Uh, just got to keep it cleaned and oiled is all. So it stays, uh, the leather stays good. Anyway, I'll be right back. As you can see, I've made a little progress. I just didn't want you guys to have to sit through the whole thing. So I'll be right back. Okay. I've gotten this far. Now this thing will have a tendency to twist until we go back the other direction. Okay, just so you know. I don't think you're doing anything wrong if it twists a little. What you do is you just loosen this up and slide it. Now this is being held by this, so you can slide it down quite far. Okay. Leave it up high enough so you can get to the holes. And then just tighten it down so that Oops, I wadded up my string. What in the deal with that? Yeah, okay. All right. You can see I've gotten all the way down to here. It's easier once you get it going, or get it going, because uh, then everything starts lining up. Okay, the first little bit in that curve always takes a little extra effort. Okay, I'll be adding loops and straps to this um, later as I figure out where I want them. And what I'll do is I'll just get some little D-rings and I'll just sew it through these holes to the outside to hold whatever strap I use to um, attach it to whatever I'm going to attach it to. Um, a lot of times you could, you know, if, if I was doing this in my shop, I'd put in some, some loops right here, not leather loops, just like a leather, little leather piece that's bratted on either side so you can slip something down in it, like a belt loop. But since I don't know which way I'm going to go with it, I'm not going to do that. Besides, I sold all my other equipment. What you see is my leather equipment is all I have because I sold it all. Uh, you know, my my uh, brads and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, I had a whole, like, six boxes of stuff. Uh, I used to have so much of this leather working stuff that's unreal. I never did any tooling, though. Uh, I never could get into that. I guess I'm not artistic enough. But um, I'd make plain tack like this. Uh, but it would all be finished edges and stuff. It just wouldn't it just wouldn't have fancy tooling all over it. But anyway, I'll be back. Okay, time to move the stitching horse. This is kind of tedious, guys. When you're working with leather and you're doing stuff like this, don't be in a rush because you're not going to get there if you if you get in a rush. And also, when you unless you're using machines to sew stuff, you're not going to you're not going to achieve perfection. Okay? All handmade stuff has got a flaw in it somewhere. Um, something's not quite perfectly in line with the other because people are human, okay? They make mistakes. This is pretty straight. That's all you can really ask for. Um, unless you're sewing it with a machine, then you're not going to get perfection. Um, some of you may have heard, you know, what was called the Persian flaw. <laughs> well, I got plenty of those. So... Anyway, I just wanted to bring you back and mention that. This is very tedious work. Um, <coughs> I'm not going to let you... I, that's why I'm stopping it every so often, because I don't want you guys to have to sit here for the two or three hours it takes to sew this together. Besides, my hands are cramping, and I had to take a little bit of a break, run some warm water over my hands. So, anyway, I'll be back. Hey guys, the stitching horse that I'm using, there's a lot of different ways you can use it. Um, you can stick it between your legs with these fins underneath each of your legs if you're working up close and you've got to really push. Uh, you can mount it flat on a table so that it's more solid. Um, you can use it on a lower or a high ta higher table. You can do, use it to where you can stand up and use it or you can sit down to use it, uh, depending on the height of the table that's in front of you, uh, or if you want to mount it solid or anything like that. Um, and what it does is the, the leather naturally wants to flatten back out, so it pulls. So it holds us together so that my stitches stay tighter. Okay, so the, 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 the this little tool is, is nice. This, this horse is nice. So anyway, uh, I'll be back. 
really quickly I wanted to go over the needles that I'm using. Now this is just a, a round pointed needle. It's just an upholster needle. That's all this is. Uh, the holes are pre-done. If the holes were not pre-done and I was using this and I was using it like an awl, I would use a chisel point which is basically it's a flat point so that it slices through the leather. I don't know, you probably can't see that. Uh, let me get something dark behind it. It's flat and then it gets skinny, but the very tip is sharp. It's a chisel point. Um, it's not, it's, it's like a little teeny, teeny, tiny flathead screwdriver with a slightly pointed end, but it, it's it, the flat parts, the flat parts come to really sharp. Okay, so that it slices through the leather like a knife rather than trying to bore a hole. Now you can do it either way, but the chisel point works a little bit faster if you don't already have pre-done holes. Pro tip. Hey guys, um, right now I'm to the end of all my holes and what I'm doing is you make several wraps right here because this is, this is a stress point. Okay. So you go over it two or three times just so that you make sure that this isn't going to come loose, okay? You just want it really strong right there uh, because if it's on a horse, uh, this is going to get some pressure from the rifle, okay? Because it's, it's at an angle, so, all right, and after you've gone around it several times. Let me get this where you can see this a little better. After you've gone this around it several times, I'm going to actually jump one because that's going to make it cross. Okay, I'm going to jump back one. And go that way. Uh, what, uh, I won't follow the other things. I'm jumping one, but I'm coming back to this hole. And you can do that because it's already sewed from the other direction. Okay. And what that does is cross it. Okay. My hands are getting weak. I had to start using the pliers because I couldn't grip, which is why I don't do this for a living anymore. But see how that's making a cross right there? And if you go to making this, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but uh, you just you're reversing it, but you're not following the exact same track as the original. Okay, and it makes a nice X all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna do one or two more stitches, and then I'll put you on hold again. Really turns out nice looking when you're done. And adjust the other strings to make it a perfect X, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, that's the whole point. This is handmade. Handmade stuff is not perfect, but it's quality because you're there every step of the way. Okay, you see how that's turning out? All right, I'm going to put you on hold until I get some more done, just so that you'll see. How it turns out. I might show you the pair of saddlebags I have that I made a long, long time ago. Um, it's it took a lot. There's uh, probably 1,800 holes and stitches in that set of saddlebags. It's just unreal the amount of holes and stitching that had to be done. 
All right, guys, I'll put you on hold. Hey, thought I'd bring you back and let you see a li little farther along. It's getting there. I just wanted you guys to see a little bit farther along. I'll bring you back in a minute and let you see when it's farther up here a little bit so you can see a long stretch of it. It really looks real good when it's done. So, um, be right back. One thing I wanted to tell you guys, uh, if you didn't pre-drill the holes and you used the chisel point and the awl, after you've got down one time, before you change to go back up, you're going to need to splice it and change the needle. The reason being is because the chisel point, when you're going back through, will cut your string, your sinew, whatever you're using. Uh, it's okay for the first time when you're cutting holes, but when you're going back, you're going to want to use a just a pointy needle. Uh, you don't want to use, at that point, a chisel point because it might cut your stitching and then all that stitching is for nothing. So, just another little tip on that. Uh, I th didn't think to tell you that before, so I thought I'd better tell you now. So that if you decide to do this, or any leather project, uh, and you use the chisel point, you don't, oh, excuse me, and you don't pre-make the holes, then uh, you're going to have to be careful with the chisel point so it doesn't cut your string when you're uh, going back across there, if you do the same type of stitch. I do want to see a few of the stitches made anyway, instead of just the results. <coughs> Few of the stitches I had to use my little pliers to poke it through and pull the needle out. My hands are hurting pretty good. But we're in the home stretch. So now that all that string that was so much earlier is not here as much now. <laughs> Makes a difference. It goes a little faster if you don't gotta argue with all that string. Or artificial sinew is the case, maybe. Once you've got the holes sewn the first time, they usually line up really good. So, because the string that's already there is holding it. Now, of course, it had to do it the minute I said something. Okay, there we go. <laughs> like a kid with their first word, right? Now you guys can kind of understand why handmade leather goods are so expensive. They're very labor and time intensive, okay? Um, you know, if you've got all the fancy sewing machines and stuff like that, it's still expensive because those, those machines are expensive. Uh, a leather sewing machine can run $5,000, you know, depending on the machine. Um... Some machines are so expensive that, that there's just no way I could ever afford one. And I never did. Whenever I was uh, making tack, I never did buy one of those big machines because they're just too much. And then if you're cutting out templates, if you don't have a stamping machine, it's all by, done by hand, you know. So anything that's handmade like this, don't complain if the person asks a little bit for it because... And this takes a lot of time. I've already over probably two hours on this right now. Okay? Plus the materials. Plus the time to go get the materials. Plus the time to cut it out. Edge it. Oil it. Uh, you know. It just takes time to do all that stuff. And, you know, time is money, right? So, if, you know, if you guys see somebody's got homemade, homemade, handmade, uh, leather sheets or saddlebags or anything and they ask a little bit for them, you're going to know why now. Because this stuff takes time. Okay. And this is not something that, you know, you're going to get paid for unless you do it. Uh, you know, it's not like a job where you go to the job and if, and if you're having a slow day and 
one. Not they still got to pay you the hours to be there. No, this job here, you don't get any money until it's done. And then you may have to wait for it, depending on whether or not you have to market it, you know. Um, this is not instant gratification by any stretch. Like those saddlebags, I'll show you guys those maybe. Um, if I can remember where I put them. They're stored right now. Those things there, I want $350 for them. And then even at that, it's not, not really making me anything. Because they took a couple of hides of leather, and most of a couple of hides of leather. And those were like $100 a piece, $129 a piece, something like that. And, I mean, I used the scraps of the leather for other things, but the majority of the hide went to the saddlebags, you know, both of them. So, anyway, as you can see, this is how long it takes to do a stitch. So, I'll put you back on hold when I get closer to the end. Stabbed myself. Got blood on the, on the leather. That's always an issue. I'm going to be careful with that. It hurts like hell. Um, yeah. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears, right? Okay. Put you back on hold. Just so you guys know how I'm using my stitching horse now, it's laid down just to hold it in place. Since I don't have to squeeze it together anymore, uh, I just need something to hold it up, right, so that I can work on it. Uh, so I lay it down on its side. And I just hold it. And the end's tail, the tail end's sticking off back behind underneath my underarm uh, for the, uh, and it's off the edge of the table because it's at like a, you know, an angle. It's not straight flat. So, you guys thought I had way too much string, right? I know you did. <laughs> this is in my first rodeo. What I did is I did six times the length of it, but I didn't measure it exact. It's a little longer than six times the length of it. You know, I made it approximately six times the length of it. But I made sure my approximate was on the long end, not the short end. Um, just because I knew how much thread this is going to take. Because, you know, each time it's got to go around, right? And you're looking at a little over a quarter of an inch each time. So... Just something to be aware of when you're measuring your string. If you want to do it all in one shot without having to tie two strings together, which is which makes a weak point in your sewing. Um, the only weak points are going to be in the sewing is going to be down here on the very bottom where I finish, where I start and finish. So, okay, I'll put you back on hold. When I get to the bottom, I'll show you how I tie it off. Oops. Get down to the last few stitches. Okay, this is the last stitch. Now, like I did on the t on the very top, I'll be taking two or three strands, two 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 or three times around. Okay. Two. Basically, it also holds that other knot really secure. So, then I take and I put underneath one, there we go, underneath one strand. Okay. And I bring it back and I hold the loop. And then I tie it off. And what I've done is I've made a slip knot. Can you see that? And here I've made a slip knot. And I do that two or three times to make sure that it's going to stay tied. And then the last time I run it through to knot it. Okay. Basically what I've done is I've hand, hand woven this part There we go. 
now. I'm hand woven this part together. Now it would stay like that, but I don't want that tail end sticking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through this stuff right here. I'm going to run it up through the stitching because we want to tie up. We want to want the end to be underneath the other stitching and we clip it off and it is done well the sewing parts now back you up ah I dropped the phone <laughs> okay This is stitching. And yes, it looks a little wavy because it hasn't been done anything with. And what you do is you just fold it and bend it back where you want it. Okay. And once it's been used a time or two and uh, your rifle's been in there and it's kind of form fitted to your rifle, then it will look even better. This is why this piece was a template, okay? Uh, it's because it had this little cut in the hide. It was that way when I got the hide. Um, and it wasn't perfect. So I figured, well, it would make a good template. That area, the hide wasn't that great anyway. And I used the rest of it for two more of these. So there's that. And it's sewn with one long piece of thread. And I didn't use regular thread. I used artificial sinew. Okay, it's flat, but once you start using it, it'll round up. Uh, but coming off the roll, it's flat. It's waxy, so it's, it's uh, not going to soak up water. Um, this roll right here probably costs, I, this is a lot smaller than what it was when I got it. It was like $30 or $40. I can't even remember now. But I bought the big roll. Now everything that I used, the leather, the artificial sinew, the, the needles, the sewing all, the uh, stitching puncher, um, all of that can be bought at Tandy Leather, okay? All of it can be put this up where you can see. Uh, you can buy so much stuff there, it's unreal. Uh, <coughs> now. All of everything that I used, with the exception of the pliers maybe, uh, was purchased at Tandy Leather. And uh, was in my repair kit, okay? All, well, the needles and the thread and the sewing. Uh, this was not in my repair kit because this weighs and I was lightening it up. I originally had it in there, and, and, but I had to lighten the weight on my pack because it was so heavy, so I took this out. Um, and then this, of course, I didn't get from Candy Leather. This is just a pair of slip joint pliers. These are very small, cute little pliers. But uh, they're real handy because they're lightweight. Um, all my needles, of course, go in this toothpick holder that I bought at the Continental Divide way up in New Mexico. Little wooden tube with a stopper that goes in there. Anyway, guys, um, this has gone on probably far, far longer than what it probably should, but this is a rifle sheath. It's for a lever action rifle. Now, you could put a, you could put a shotgun in there, like maybe an H&R single shot. Uh, I don't know. The big pumps won't go in there because the, the hand grip is too big, but uh, this is just like for a leather, leather action, 30-30, uh, 357 lever action, something along those lines. Um, that's what this fits right here. Uh, this right here is, is just to protect the gun. And uh, the leather can be had at Tandy, the, the patterns to make it, everything. So, uh, you know, if you have a Tandy leather in your town, and there are a lot of them in the United States in major cities. If not, I'm sure they have an online store as well. But a good resource if you want to make knife sheets or belt blanks or... Or, or gun holsters, or rifle scabbards, or tack, or saddlebags, or motorcycle bags, 
shaps, all that kind of stuff. And it sounds like a Tandy leather commercial, and it kind of is. You know, I don't get no money from them. Um, but they have what you need if you want to work with leather. So if you guys would, uh, please hit the thumbs up. <laughs> My hurt thumb. Oh, I've got a big hole in the side of it. Uh, thumbs up. Uh, like, comment. Uh, hit the bell icon if you haven't already hit it. Share it with your friends. Consider supporting the channel if you would. And I'm, oh, real quick. I will be probably putting on some loops probably around here and around here so that it can be hung on either my pack or my uh, saddle. Of course, I don't ride anymore. I got too crippled up for that, but I can't quite give up the idea. Anyway, uh, y'all come back and see me.